Hi, I'm calling in no. Thomas and Dexter Avenue North. I think somebody's dead. So I believe it's going to be Carr versus Ped, and they're doing CPR. I'm sorry, Fire, I don't have more for you, but it just occurred, and I believe the officer's involved. She was 26 anyway. She had limited value. <laughs> Were you aware that it was being recorded? No, I was not. What it is, what it do, you two? Welcome back to another reaction video. Bring your voice out, Jay, and man, we back again with another crazy one dog and they coming in hot today bro they coming in hot today it's time where we got explore with us when a cop accidentally reports something shock it really ain't that shocking because it's a lot of cops that try to pretend like they're good cops but we all know the truth I'm not saying all cops are bad cops you know what i'm saying it's just most of them they pretend to be good cops but really deep down they they're they're not even bad cops, they're just bad individuals, bad people. They just have malice in their hearts, bro. But anyways, man, we're gonna go ahead and check this video out. We're gonna do too much talking because we already done enough, so let's just go ahead and jump to it, man. Let's get it, man. Let's go. Hi, I'm calling in no. Thomas and Dexter Avenue North. I think somebody's dead. So I believe it's gonna be Carr versus Ped and they're doing CPR. I'm sorry, Fire, I don't have more for you, but it just occurred and I believe the officer's involved. She was 26 anyway, she had limited value. <laughs> Were you aware that it was being recorded? No, I was not. When police received disturbing information in reference to a potential overdose, a race to the scene will trigger a sequence of shocking tragedies. On January 23, 2022, at 8 p.m., Seattle police dispatchers receive a call that will set in motion a night of both madness and scandal. It's hard, it's hard to think. Okay, that yeah, happens. Sorry. All right, well, just try to, try to relax and think with me. Have you done cocaine before? Yes. Okay. Do you think you've overdosed on it? I think so, yes. Okay, so I'm going to get you some help, all right? Okay. So stand by. Can I have your name, please? No. Just to, so we know who we're looking for, we're, we're getting some assistance to you as quick as we can right now. You, you can call me Alex. Alex? Uh, did you want to give your last name? No, I'm okay. I'm just kind of freaking out right now. First responders and a medic team are quickly dispatched to Alex's location. 6th Street North, downtown. First en route is Officer Kevin Dave, who speeds into action in his single officer cruiser. A fire and medical team prepare to meet him on 6th Street. Officer Dave swerves his police SUV through downtown traffic, flashing his lights and blasting his siren to warn oncoming traffic and pedestrians. In overdose cases, every moment counts. He's approaching the intersection of Dexter Street and Thomas Street, a two-lane road with a bike lane and a construction site obscuring a portion of the sidewalk from view. Officer Dave speeds through this 25-mile-per-hour zone when the catastrophic happens. Some of the following footage has been redacted out of respect for the victim. Oh! Oh! to start a supervisor, start fire for a struck pedestrian. Off screen, Officer Dave quickly jumps out of his vehicle yes, and please. dashes out into Dexter Street. Moments later, we hear the unmistakable sounds of emergency CPR. Tragically, a pedestrian had been struck. Despite Dave's persistent CPR, the pedestrian remains unresponsive. At 30 pause. Three, four, what are you? Five, five, six, what are doing CPR on somebody who just took significant damage from being hit by a vehicle in the open, by the way? I'm pretty sure there would be like some broken ribs or like ribs poking into the lungs type shit going on. CPR would probably worsen it. That's what I would think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. You all right? No, I'm not all right. Dave soon notifies dispatch, and a squadron of police cruisers and ambulances descend on the scene to assist. So if someone's doing CPR, Dexter, North, and Thomas. I'm sorry, Fire, I don't have more for you, but it just occurred, and I believe the officer's involved. So the officer may be involved. Yeah, the officer's not hurt, there. though. 
By now, Alex has been given proper medical assistance, and all attention has shifted to the tragedy unfolding in downtown Seattle. Dispatchers are now receiving calls from eyewitnesses who will prove a crucial role in the investigation that will come later. Was it like a yeah. vehicle hit a pedestrian? What happened? Correct. They're doing a CPR right now. The person was crossing the road, and um, I think police were coming, going fast, so they hit them. All right, hold on I'm a not minute. sure if there's anything I need to do. There's another. There's there's two police officers here, and I think there's another one coming right now. Officer Dave's colleagues comfort him as he describes what went down. There's on the crosswalk. She saw me. She started running through the crosswalk, slammed on my brakes. Instead of staying back where she should before crossing. That don't even sound like. It was a person, not a deer. <laughs> I don't think anybody in their right mind sees a speeding car and runs out in front of it. Unless they were trying the same to you know, be said for the stuff. young woman lying unresponsive in the street, a 23-year-old grad student. Despite medics' best attempts, she passes away after being transported to the Damn. hospital. Yeah, Dave, you okay? Did they say a medic grad student? Transported to the grad student. Despite the young woman lying unresponsive in the street, a 23-year-old grad student. Oh, despite grass. medics' best attempts, she Damn. passes away after being transported to the hospital. Yeah, Dave, you okay? Physically, no medical issues. No medical issues. Okay. I'm not going to ask any questions. I just, I just don't want you to know that I'm here for you. That we're going to get you everything that we that you need. Okay. Okay. Thanks, All right, man. While the true intentions behind the officer's assertion that he won't ask questions is unknown. It's possible he's trying to protect Officer Dave. That's what I was Clearly, thinking. body cameras are rolling That's what I was and thinking. documenting the conversation. Incriminate there are also labor and department policies involved in these types of situations. Some agencies won't allow a responding officer to question an involved officer and require an internal group or external law enforcement agency to do so. One important purpose of this type of policy is to maintain impartiality. Many police are represented by unions, and it's possible that it could be against union rules for officers to question each other without the presence of a union representative, counsel, or both. As stated, the specifics of this particular incident are unknown, and these are a few of the potential reasons the officer has stated that he won't question Officer Dave. Photos of the aftermath were taken, and evidence was tagged and inventoried. Officer Dave's cruiser, a Ford Police Interceptor, had sustained heavy damage to its front push Damn. bar, passenger side headlights, and minor cracks to its front windshield. Debris was scattered across the cold Seattle pavement. Two AirPods were found, Boy. presumably ejected from the pedestrian's ears at the moment of contact. Body cam footage from Officer Dave's cruiser was inventoried and sent to the police archive to be reviewed <laughs> during a pending internal hey, investigation. Why are, why is a police officer speeding to an overdose anyway? Why, like he's not an EMT. Another police body cam would later elevate this freak accident to the level of international scandal. Several witnesses later told what they saw from where they stood on the sidewalk that fateful night. Um, I was trailing behind them. We changed sides of the street to avoid a construction zone. They were ahead of me. They were crossing the street. We heard a siren. I heard a siren. I would presume the pedestrian also heard a siren. I observed them beginning to run, presumably to exit the roadway as they heard a siren approaching. And then I heard a loud thump. And I observed the police officer come to a halt. I was not far behind them, so I was coming into view of Dexter Street. It was very quick. You saw the collision. What happened after that? So that person kind of got kicked by the car into the air, and they flew in the air about 10, 10 meters in the northbound yeah. direction. Damn. Certain factors were suspected to have contributed to the deadly collision. A construction site leading up the east of Dexter Street significantly so not only, obscured dry Not only was he flying in a downtown area, you were flying through a construction zone. What the fuck? That's automatically a fucking super speeder. Driver vision and a partly see-through metal chain you fence are, you are, led like out to the... You are in a construction zone, you know there's construction work. 
or there could be construction workers out there. That's why they find you so heavily for speeding through construction zones because people are walking through there. And this wasn't even a construction worker. This was just a pedestrian. The edge of the road. <laughs> Orange construction barricades also partially obstructed view of the intersection from afar. The pedestrian was evidently already walking outside the crosswalk when Officer Dave began to approach in his cruiser. She was possibly wearing AirPods that could have made hearing police sirens difficult. Later analysis of the footage revealed that Officer Dave had performed proper collision avoidance, braking and emergency steering to the center of the street. He'd initiated his siren appropriately moments before the collision. Unfortunately, the Ford Cruiser was too powerful to be slowed by a short period of braking, and the steering didn't effectively change the direction. Officer Dave is sent to the West Precinct and is met by Officer Daniel Otterer from the DUI squad, whose duties include investigating drivers for signs of impairment. It's protocol to have drivers evaluated in serious injury or fatality collisions. After completing his testing of Officer Dave, Officer Otterer concludes that Dave has exhibited no signs of impairment and is safe to operate a motor vehicle. Weeks later, police archivists were routinely going over body cam footage to prepare for internal review and analysis. In the process, they stumbled on a potentially problematic piece of audio captured by Officer Otterer's body cam immediately following his session with Officer Dave. The body cam had recorded Officer Otterer's side of a oh, phone wow. conversation with Mike Solon, the president of the Seattle Police Officers Guild. Yep, totally. All right, brother. Well, uh, yep, um, I'm sure uh, TCIS is. And I, uh, oh, he's good. He says, well, normally we don't give voluntary statements and I said hey you're gonna have to decide if you wanted to give a statement or not but it does not seem like there's a criminal investigation going on yeah I mean he's going 50 that's not out of control that's not reckless for a trained driver yeah Ooh, shit. lights and sirens in a construction yeah, well, zone there's some um, the, initially uh he said she was in a crosswalk uh, there's a witness that says, no, she wasn't. Unfortunately, witness statements aren't always reliable. Clearly, the victim was in the crosswalk yeah. at the time of impact. But that witness could be different because I don't think she was thrown 40 feet either. I think she went up on the hood, hit the yeah. windshield. Then when he hit the brakes, flew off the car. But she is dead. <laughs> no, it's a regular person. Regular person. Yeah. Yeah, just write a check. Wow. Just, just write a yeah. check. <laughs> $11,000. She was 26 anyway. She had limited value. Apparently, wow. Daniel was unaware that his body cam was still recording. $11,000 for killing someone's child. Through extensive police analysis, it was determined that Officer wow. Dave had been going upwards of 70 miles per hour and that the pedestrian had been flung nearly 140 feet. The body cam video was brought to light, allegedly feet, by a leak to the media, and complaints from outraged citizens began pouring in. It turns out that Daniel Otterer's duties went beyond those of the DUI force. He also served as vice president for the Seattle Police Officers Guild. With pressure mounting, the Police Officers Guild issued a press release addressing the alleged misconduct. In it, they claimed that Officer Otterer's comments had been taken out of context. Nah, Within hell days, no. the Office of Police Accountability had received a complaint that alleged Officer Otterer had violated department policy. Officer Otterer initially requested... That shows he don't even give a fuck. Like, that's, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, <laughs> it'd be these type of peoples that have such high positions and... So many people look up to them in the community saying how great of an individual they are when they're really fucking dead on the inside. They're fucking evil, bro. Like, how the fuck you laugh at somebody's death? This man literally said she was only worth $11,000. No, no type of value. $11,000 would just barely cover a funeral. Barely. The bare minimal of a funeral. So you would just pay for the funeral. That's it. Here's five... A thousand dollars or five hundred dollars left over. That's fucked up, bro. That's fucked up. Absolutely fucked up. Rapid adjudication, a mechanism of the police bureaucracy. And I bet, I bet he just resigned and went to a whole nother police. 
gave a full investigation in exchange for minor discipline, but his request was denied. Officer Otterer and Union President Solon were both promptly brought in to give official statements. They were interviewed by Sergeant Corey George of Seattle's Office of Police Accountability, a police task force that works to ensure professionalism and safeguard against unethical or inappropriate police behavior. Your uh, body-worn video captured a conversation between yourself and Officer Solon. Can you explain the content and context of the phone call? I was, I was finished, and I was heading home. And we were talking about, because I had very limited information on, on scene, so I was telling what I kind of knew at the time, and those details always change during the course of an investigation. Mike was, or Officer Solon, was talking about what, what could anybody do? What can anybody say about this? And, and that was kind of the context of the conversation. I remember in, earlier in the conversation where we spoke about, uh, boy, it never stops. It's always something happening. We were talking about that. And then this... Uh, was a conversation about maybe things we knew at the time, and then this is awful. What can attorneys possibly say about that? And that was the end of the conversation. Were you aware that it was being recorded? No, I was not. It has been alleged that you violated uh, SPD policy manual section 5.001, standards and duties, subsection 10, employees shall strive to be professional. What is your understanding of this policy section? I understand it very well. You don't want to do anything that could potentially diminish trust in the police department. Uh, cast doubt on hey, uh, well, you fucking did that, bro. or cause a problem where the police department might have to explain something. Uh, do you believe that you violated this policy? I did not violate that policy. It was a you private a fucking liar. In a car alone that just happened to be recorded by my camera turning on probably when I made a U-turn. So basically what you're saying is <laughs> the person that you are at work is a completely different person that you are at home. So you put on a front at work but you a bitch of an individual outside of work. That's fucked up. It's true character, true character. Or another car could have simply passed by. Next came Mike Solon, Daniel's boss and good friend. At one point, Officer Otterer says she's dead and begins laughing shortly thereafter. Do you recall what you said to Officer Otterer to make him laugh? I remarked on how fa he commented on how fast the officer was traveling and how she unfortunately was struck by the police vehicle and how that she hit the windshield of the vehicle. And I was remarking that she was more than likely dead instantly, which was a tragedy. And I said that the city is going to have to pay out a lot of money on this one. And that was the context of the conversation. At one point, Officer Otter mentions just write a check. Then he laughs for a few seconds and says $11,000. She was 26 anyways. She had limited value. Do you recall what you stated to Officer Otter to have him elicit that response? Well, there was remarking on how the city is <laughs> going to have to pay out a ton of money to the family in this tragic situation, and then how can the city, lawyers in general, speaking and negotiating on the city's behalf with the family, how do you put a price tag on human life? And that was the crux. Well, I know damn well it's not worth $11,000. $11,000 ain't shit. Eleven thousand dollars ain't even some rare. Eleven thousand dollars, bro. Just that's not even a salary. What the fuck? Eleven thousand dollars will last like a month, maybe two, if you stretch it. You know what I'm saying? Conversation. Okay. So you don't believe that eleven thousand laughing was making light of the situation or laughing at the fact that somebody had, had died. Oh, he I definitely was laughing at that. Without context, he died. just hearing the audio, which was unfortunately captured in a private phone call, you could have that as a reasonable takeaway. Police officers, we deal with tragedy almost on a daily basis. And we're human beings just like the next person. But we have to process these in a manner that allows us to go to that next tragic event. And humor and sarcasm is used for us as a, a coping mechanism. In response to the events, the Seattle Police Department announced on September 28, 2023, that Officer Daniel Otterer would be reassigned to a non-operational position. Records show that over his 12 years on the police force, he had been investigated dozens of times for various incidents. The victim, Janavi Kandula, was 23 years old and a graduate student when she met her tragic death on Dexter Street. In September of 2023, Northeastern University in Washington elected to award their mourned student a posthumous degree. The King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office is currently conducting a criminal review of the crash. That's crazy, bro.
Absolutely insane, man. Hey, I knew I knew he wasn't wasn't gonna get anything major. He got a slap on the wrist, basically, dog. Slap on the wrist. <laughs> Even if it was a private conversation, which he is, right? It was a private conversation, and he was off duty. But still, it just shows your character outside of work. And if you like that outside of work, I feel like you're gonna be like that at work. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you put it on the front to pretend like you're such a nice individual and you're professional and you care about all these people and you're out here to protect and serve. No, you're not. You're out here for a paycheck and that's it. That's it. You're out. Uh, the only reason you act this way is because you got these body cameras. What if you didn't have these body cameras? What then? Who knows what would have been said? Who knows what would have happened? You know what I'm saying? Who knows? Like, uh, uh, you, uh, I'm not trying to blame bro who hit her ass, but who knows what his excuse would have been had it not been caught on dash cam or on his body. You feel me? Like, what the fuck? But anyways, man, y'all let me know y'all thoughts and opinions on it down below. That's going to do it for this one, man. I appreciate y'all stopping by the channel, rocking with your boy. Make sure you stick around to the channel for more videos. Drop a man. It's your boy, Shadjan. I'm out. Peace.